to business, Cookie. He doesn't want to be in my video. He's just out of reach. We're filming out here today, so you may hear some cats. <laughs> June's over. Holy shit. Holy, holy shnikes, man. Summer really does fly. So June, 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 June. What the fuck did I read in June? Oh my God. I wasn't lying. I've read a lot of graphic novels. First off, we have Rick and Morty. We all know from my last video that <sighs> my guilty pleasure, unfortunately. I read the Rick and Morty graphic novels, volumes six through 10. They were a decent collection. I rated most of them four out of five stars, but numbers eight and 10, I rated three stars. A lot of it gets really repetitive and it's a lot of the same stuff that you'd see in the show, just kind of rehashed with different situations. So I'm kind of over it at this point. I'm probably gonna finish the last few volumes just because I've already made it this far. But overall, they're kind of mid, at least the regular volumes. Which brings me to the next Rick and Morty novels. I read Rick and Morty Presents volumes one through three, which the first one was fantastic. I rated all three of them four out of five stars because they were actually mostly unique content. I don't know why the Rick and Morty Presents is different than the regular Rick and Morty graphic novels, but they're definitely more entertaining. Yeah, Rick and Morty. <laughs> Next in the list of graphic novels, we have Paper Girls volumes two through five. I read the first volume last month and I was pretty hopeful about it. I really enjoy Brian K. Vaughn's graphic novels. This one, it, it's okay. Brian K. Vaughn has a very unique style with his graphic novels. However, Paper Girls, as a whole is a specific kind of sci-fi. Time travel is my least favorite sci-fi trope. It's just a trope I'm kind of over. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna read the rest of Paper Girls. It's, it's really good. I rate it four out of five stars. I don't think it's for me and that's okay. I'll just wait for more of his other stuff to come out. I spend quite a bit of time in the adult graphic novel section of my local library, so I'm often discovering quite a few new series. One of them in particular is called Sheltered, a pre-apocalyptic tale. It's about these kids that end up in like this bunker situation where they're in kind of like one of those neighborhoods but with a bunch of bunkers and it's just kids. It's pretty violent, honestly, and it's not what I expected. Unfortunately, my local library does not have the sequels. Do I like the series enough to buy a physical copy of the sequels? I'm a pass, but I do give it a four out of five stars. The next and final graphic novel that I consumed was The Walking Dead Book One. I am late to the party with The Walking Dead. I watched the show when it was really popular. I think I stopped watching around season three or four. I really liked the first book. It was really good. The Walking Dead comics are a lot more wordy than other comic books that I've read. It's less focused on the actual art and more focused on the actual dialogue, which I really like. It's a unique style and I already have the second book in my possession and I will read more of them. If you don't know what the story of The Walking Dead is, I think you missed like a whole like thing in popular media, which I kind of respect if you <laughs> if you don't know anything about Walking Dead, but there was a whole zombie thing for a while. If you missed it, you're either older than me or younger than me, significantly. <laughs> no judgment. I'm getting old. I did consume some manga this month. What? Manga? Wouldn't call myself a weeb, but I do enjoy anime and manga. I read the book Tomi by Junji Ito, which 
I think it's a yeah there it is but I've owned this book for like six years and I just never got around to finishing it I restarted it and finished it and I enjoyed it quite a bit. Tell me is about this girl that just keeps on getting murdered over and over again. And every time she gets murdered, she just like splits into more pieces of herself and like grows back. It's pretty horrific and I loved it. I don't know if that's the best summary of Tomi. It's weird. If you like gross manga, horror, Tomi, I would give five out of five stars. If you're a horror fan and you have not consumed any Junji Ito manga, I highly recommend because you're missing out. If you want to start with Tomi, go for it, but I would recommend Uzumaki. That one's my favorite. That one gave me nightmares and I loved it. <laughs> the only other manga I read this month was the first volume of My Hero Academia. If you don't know what My Hero Academia is, it's a very popular manga and anime series about average normal citizens that suddenly get superhero powers. The main character is a boy who wants to be a superhero and wants to go to like the superhero school for like the really good superheroes. However, he does not have superpowers and let's just say he acquires them somehow. At least in the first novel. That's pretty much the plot. Another graphic novel that I read was Seven to Eternity, Volume 1, The God Whispers. This was a really interesting one. I picked it up from the library because the artwork was really cool. The dialogue was very unique. I'm not sure if it's fantasy or sci-fi. I feel like it's more fantasy. If it is sci-fi, it's like post-apocalyptic sci-fi. I'd say it's more fantasy. Either way, it's a, like people have powers and there's like a power struggle in it. It's kind of a difficult read, to be honest, but I was up for the challenge. I rated Seven to Eternity, four out of five stars. I have the second volume to read in the month of July. So many graphic novels. Do you have to scratch right now? Thank you. Let's move on to the regular books, but I am going to start out with the audiobooks. Cookie. He just wants to be the star of the show, huh? Ah! He's very violent. <laughs> One of the first audiobooks I consumed this month was Family of Liars by E. Lockhart. This is the sequel to We Were Liars, which I read last month. I didn't really like We Were Liars. I surprisingly enjoyed the sequel. It was a different character in the family and she was a lot more relatable. It was still like rich people on an island. She was just a more likable character, honestly. It said that you had to read the first book before the sequel, but honestly, I don't think you really need to. I would give it four out of five stars. I still am not really like a big fan of the author because it is a YA novel and we've been over this. I'm getting too old for YA novels, but four out of five stars, not bad. The next audiobook, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. This one's pretty embarrassing. I was gifted an Audible subscription and <laughs> I was up really late one night. I just wanted to find the most ridiculous title I could find. The book is called Dirty Wolf, Alpha Wolf, <laughs> Alpha Wolf Wants Curves number one. It's a romance novel, obviously. Not only that, it's a specific type of genre called a shifter novel, I believe they're called. Very popular among the smut and romance community. Was there smut in this book? Absolutely. Was their dude shifting into werewolves? Definitely. It was an experience. As a former Twilight lover in my teens, it was very enjoyable, surprisingly so. It's really embarrassing that I liked this book. I was expecting it to be like a solid two out of five stars, but I rated it four out of five, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, four out of five. All right, last and final audiobook I read was Mass Effect Andromeda Nexus Uprising by 
I do not know the author's name offhand for some reason, but I will display it somewhere over here. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of the Mass Effect original trilogy. The Mass Effect Andromeda had everything that I like in a space opera. The game was mid, but I love the story. So when I got this Audible Plus subscription, I was instantly putting this on my TBR. Much to my disappointment, I gave this book a three out of five stars. Danny, I thought you liked Mass Effect. <sighs> I do, but most of this book was really boring. The person who narrated it was Frida Wolf, who voiced female writer in Mass Effect Andromeda, which was awesome. She's a great voice actor. It was just the writing. The writing was bland. It was a really good background for the story because it is a prequel to Mass Effect Andromeda, but it wasn't that good. The end of the book was pretty good. I really liked getting the background of a particular character that I liked in the game, but everything else was kind of meh. I don't think I can recommend it. Physical books. These books I read physically. I read a couple TikTok books this month and the first one was A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. Incredibly popular book. It's a really good fantasy novel. It's also like an action and a romance and it's a fey novel which is, it, it, it has its own community. I'm just gonna leave it at that. A Court of Thorns and Roses reads like a YA novel but there are moments in it that really aren't YA, if you know what I mean. <laughs> a Court of Thorns and Roses, I gave 4.5 out of 5 stars. I am really excited to read the rest of the books. I have the sequel, I own it physically, so I plan on reading it in July. Hopefully. I got the huge TBR and it's just stacking up. I haven't even read, read half of these. I need to get on that. <laughs> The next book I read this month was The Songs of Distant Earth by Arthur C. Clarke. This is one of the classic sci-fi novels that you'll find on a lot of sci-fi lists, mostly because Arthur C. Clarke wrote the novelization of 2001 A Space Odyssey. This book was on one of my uh, Goodreads book clubs and it was mid, unfortunately. I gave it three out of five stars. There wasn't any depth to the character. Like, I don't even think there was a single description of a character and they were just faceless people playing a part. That's not really something I look for in a book that I'm reading, especially a fiction book. I want some sort of emotional connection with the characters and I didn't get that. The story was very interesting. It was a futuristic, sense of going to another planet after the earth is kaputs. People are on this planet and then more people come to the planet after the earth is gone and it's just two cultures integrating for a bit in the future. Yeah, I was disappointed. <laughs> Hopefully I can find some more sci-fi novels that I legitimately enjoy in the near future because it is my favorite genre. I read Pleasure Unbound by Larissa Ione. It is a supernatural paranormal romance. It's about demons and a demon hunter. It has a pretty predictable plot, but there's a lot of action sequences in it that were really good. I think that the author is a big Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan and that really came off in this book. I didn't actually watch Buffy because I was a child and I just never got to watching it. I'd imagine that if you like it, you might like that book. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. I honestly would read that book again. The smut was pretty good. It wasn't like cringy or anything. Although in these paranormal romances, there's a lot of growling. <laughs> I don't know why growling's supposed to be sexy, but I guess it is. I actually kind of want to read the sequel and it's on Kindle Unlimited, which I am going to get soon once I knock some of my physical TBRs out. 
The next book that I read was Self Portrait with Ghost Short Stories by Meng Jin. This was one of the first arcs that I won through Goodreads and it was one of the first physical arcs that I won. This book isn't even out yet. It's a bunch of short stories by one author and they kind of have a tie-in with each other. Mostly about grief and like death from what I remember. There were a couple stories in that book that really stuck with me. I was like, huh? What did I just read? I gave it four out of five stars. Would recommend picking it up. It's coming out, I think, in July. I will put up the date because I cannot remember. Another ARC book that I read that I won on my Kindle from Goodreads was Destined Souls by Ellie Wade. This is a romance novel and it's probably the worst romance novel I've ever read. Keep in mind, I haven't read many of them. Most of the romance novels I've read have been in the last few months while I've been expanding my horizons. It started off really strong with this girl who is getting a divorce, meets a guy at the casino, and they end up hooking up and then they part ways. And later on, they run into each other again. There really was very little smut in this book. Most of it was in the beginning. The book went on forever. I swear, like, the middle of the book just lasted so long. I was like, when is this book over? Like, it was very repetitive. There's too much filler in it way too much filler and i know this is one of those romance series where it's like a bunch of characters that are like kind of in a similar situation that know each other i don't know if this is just kind of like a supplementary book to the rest of the series but i did not enjoy it so two out of five stars i didn't hate it it was all right minimal smut boring characters Everything ended in a way that was unrealistic. I did not have a good time. Last but not least, very excited to talk about this other TikTok book, It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. Okay, this was probably my favorite book that I read this month. I was like, hmm, a TikTok novel? It's like a romance? <laughs> Whatever. After reading a couple other TikTok books, I did not have my hopes up. I love this book. I cried so much. I have never cried so hard reading a book. It's a romance novel but it also has themes of abuse. If you've ever been in or around a domestic violence situation, this book will pull out your heartstrings. It broke me. I even had to post a TikTok because I was like, what did y'all make me read? <laughs> it was really good. I immediately bought more Colleen Hoover books. So I'm really excited to read more of them. I've heard mixed things that some of Colleen Hoover's books are for some people and some of them are for other people, but I guess we'll find out. I just got Verity in the mail today. We're gonna be reading that. Well, this has been quite a month. I did not read as much as I did last month and that's because the sun is out. It's summer. I live in the Portland area and we only get like three months of sun. I will be outside for quite a bit. Hopefully I can get some beach reading in. I'm going to be going to the river more often. I am going to do whatever I want like I usually do. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe if that is something you would like to do. I can't tell you how to live your life, but anyway, I'm out of here.